What's up everyone, my name is College Sports Revived and I welcome you to a Sweet 16 episode today. We're back with the College Hoops 2K Legacy Mode series with the UT Martin Skyhawks featuring the legendary Coach Carter as UTM looks to continue the magical run they've made in the final season of this series. The next defeat we take will mark the end of this series and I think these Skyhawk players subconsciously know that fact because both the Georgetown and VCU games went down to the wire, but somehow UT Martin has found a way as they become only the 8th 13 seed to survive the first weekend of the NCAA tournament. What awaits us, however, is a matchup against the defending champions, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, with a chance to write some more history. A 13 seed has never won a Sweet 16 game in the history of March, they're 0-8 all time and if we once again find a way to continue to dance that will push the unknown school of UT Martin into that upper tier of Cinderella stories. It won't be easy of course, Georgia Tech knows a thing or two about being an underdog. They won the national championship in the previous year of this series as an 11 seed, the highest seed ever to do so. And they pretty much return all of their core from that team a season ago to put together a 28 win team this season. Georgia Tech is a very scary squad and a lot of basketball fans thought the Yellow Jackets were deserving of the top overall seed heading into March, but they had to settle with being the third one seed of the tournament in our region due to an untimely defeat at the hands of Florida State in the first round of the ACC postseason tournament. The eventual ACC champs would become the Wolfpack of NC State, one of the two teams that secured a one seed before Georgia Tech did, but we'll talk about Georgia Tech's road to the tournament as a whole in a moment. For now, we're going to look at some of the team stats and they're going to give you all the clarity you need to see why this is the best team in the country in most fans' eyes. The third highest scoring offense in the nation at an even 87 points a clip. And even more impressive of a stat is their 17.8 team assists a game, which is the best in the business. And with a whopping five players that score at least 10 points a night, it's no secret that this is a very unselfish squad. And now as we take a gander at the Yellow Jackets road to the tournament, it's pretty clear to see that Georgia Tech does not play down a competition. They only have 5 losses on the season and they've all come to teams who have made the field of 64. However, Tech entered the tournament losing 3 of 4, but at the same time we sat in and watched their second round game against ACC opponent Virginia Tech and they ran the Hokies out of the gym 87-63. So. It seems that Tech has indeed <laughs> overcome their cold streak as we take a look at the roster now. First and foremost, we have Slade Channing, a crafty lefty who is a 5'11 point guard who put up 17 first half points against Virginia Tech. He's quite the spectacle and on a team that's 20th in the nation in 3 point percentage, he may be the best pure shooter on this team with a dazzling 44% from 3 on the season. Gilbert White is second on the team in scoring. He's an elite two-way power forward, ranking second on the team in blocks. But I think the scariest player on this team is 6'6 junior Kevin Pinson, who is very versatile. He'll get minutes at both guard spots and at small forward, and he can be a microwave as he put up 14 out of Tech's first 28 points against the Hokies. Betancourt and Diggs will need to be on their defensive game today to stop him. Rounding out their starting five, we have Hanley Graves, a 6'9 center who's undersized but makes up for it with it being a great athlete, and Daniel Ritter who is a bruising 243 pound wing who can rebound and finish with power or finesse around the rim. Can't forget about 6'8 six man Xavier Grimes who led this very deep bench in scoring on the season. He will see minutes at the 3, 4, and the 5. One last interesting point to bring up before we talk strategy of this game is the South region itself. The other three brackets this season have had a few Cinderella stories, but all three will also have conventional Elite Eight matchups with one versus two seeds of the West, Midwest, and East brackets making the regional finals. Well, that's not the case down here in the South. <laughs> Georgia Tech, of course, can join the rest of the one seeds in the Elite Eight with a win over us today. But on the lower half of our bracket, take a look at the Colonials of George Washington becoming only the 8th 10th seed to make the Elite 8 as they try to join Syracuse's 2016 team as the only two 10 seeds to dance into the Final Four. And that's big news for UT Martin because if they can spoil Georgia Tech today, a 10th seed awaits UT Martin in the Elite 8. And that's about the best odds you can ask for to try to make the Final Four. And thus, just like we've done pregame against Georgetown and VCU, we once again sit around the whiteboard to talk strategy to beat the defending champs today. Number one, take care of the basketball. Georgia Tech is second among all tournament teams in steals per game at 8.7 a clip. 
just behind the Florida Gators, and that's how Tech really scores so many points. They're a good three-point shooting team, but they make their money by turning teams over. They forced Virginia Tech into 17 team turnovers in the round of 32 game we watched. Playing chaotic is where the Yellow Jackets are most comfortable, especially in that full court trap. They'll be doing it all game. And there's no team in the field that's as good as Tech and turning takeaways into points. So play with confidence, but also play smart. Number two is get the ball inside on offense. This is a bit of a different ripple than we normally see from UT Martin. They're a pretty three point happy team. But the only real weakness on Georgia Tech is that they lack a real interior presence down low. Georgetown had Tariq Nyland, VCU had Josiah Finley, but you can't say the same about these Yellow Jackets. So feed Gardner, he's coming off a double-double in the double overtime win over VCU, and get the ball to Fry, who's been licking his chops to make an impact after sitting on the bench a lot with foul trouble throughout the entire tournament up to this point. And when we pound it down low, that's when those three-point bombs for Diggs and Darnay will, in fact, open up. And finally, number three, leave it all out there. UT Martin is playing with house money today. No one gave them a chance to be in this position. And we've already accomplished what we wanted for six seasons of this series already. An NCAA tournament victory, we have that. The upset over VCU, and however far we go this season, is just icing on the cake. So play confident, and no matter if you shoot 10 for 10 or 2 for 20, win or lose, it does not matter. Just make sure you can look in your teammates in the eye and say, I left it all out there on the court and I played this game like it was my last. These are the keys Coach Carter is identifying out of the outset, and these will be the points to remember as we try to embark on uncharted territory, becoming the first ever 13 seed to reach the Elite Eight. That's what's on the line as we rush out of the locker room to leave everything we have on the hardwood floor today. Welcome to Houston, Texas, everybody. Tip Off is up next. my pleasure to welcome you to Reliance Stadium, now known as NRG Stadium, home of the Houston Texans and our temporary home for the Sweet 16. UT Martin continues to keep this series alive with unfathomable upset wins and they'll try to keep it going today. Not only do the Skyhawks have a lot on the line, but so does Georgia Tech. Since Florida won back-to-back -back titles back in 2006 and 2007, a defending champion in college basketball has not ever made it past the Sweet 16 since then. So Georgia Tech is coming out motivated as well to put an end to that streak. So everyone's ready with the pre-game tip-off right here, right now. UT Martin versus the defending champions. Here we go with Hanley Graves winning the tip-off. And Georgia Tech will have the first rights to the basketball today as we see Slade Channing dis displaying the dribbling and Coach Carter putting his best perimeter defender, Darnay Betancourt, right into the shooter's pocket of the all-conference point guard. Dumps it down low to Graves. Ball reversal to Kevin Pinson. Jacques Diggs will be his assignment and he actually forced him to pick up his dribble but gets a little bit too uh, aggressive there with the reach and foul. And we're ready to see this third ranked offense nationally go to work here. 87 points a game for the Yellow Jackets, third to only Maryland in Gonzaga for the top spot in the nation as this inbound goes inside to Kevin Pinson. Pick and roll into Hanley Graves with the left handed finger roll finish. That didn't take very long, 30 seconds off the board, and for the first time today, we also see this vaunted press by the Yellow Jackets with not much issue getting it across the timeline. Here comes Diggs. He will stop and pop. Nice pass by Teron Gardner. We see Gardner has continuously gotten better and better, feeling more comfortable with the ball in his hands. Gardner came to UT Martin three seasons ago as more of just a pure rebounder inside score, but he's really fleshed out his offensive game. Nice assist there as we see Pinson taken off from just inside the dotted line to force Gardner to foul. So Kevin Pinson, in my opinion, the most scary player from this Georgia Tech lineup. He was a freshman last year on the championship team, and he had a monster game off the bench in that victory. But here's one of his weaknesses. Pinson, he will split these free throws. He only shoots 66% on the season for the 6'6 sophomore. So now on UT Martin's next possession, down by one, Jacques Diggs gets a step. Pinson recovers quickly. This one works around to Betancourt, who also finds a lane. He will finish with his offhand as the goaltending is called by Hanley Graves. And I mean, hey, I know it was goaltending, but Graves, 
what leaping ability this kid has. He's not the most skilled, but man, does his leaping ability really help him out. He's a great athlete, but Darnay doesn't care. Two points is two points as Betancourt continues his awesome tournament through the first two games. He's averaged um, 12 and a half points and four and a half assists against VCU and Georgetown. Pinson off the mark, and then Hanley Graves is sent back by Blaine Fry. A block shot there for the star studded big man inside. So UT Martin with the lead and the possession, and they will add to it. Nice up and under move. The roll will drop for Teron Gardner. That's routine. And speaking of great tournaments, Gardner has had one himself. 16 and 10 in 37 minutes in the double overtime victory against VCU. He played a huge role after Blaine Fry fouled out. But then Teron Gardner finds himself on the wrong side of a mismatch. Slade Shenning steps it back and hits it over Gardner there. And then Daniel Ritter records a steal inside to Gilbert White. And here comes the Yellow Jackets. They retake the lead seven to six. The first team turnover hopefully will not be many for UT Martin. We saw last episode in the VTAC versus GTAC game in the round of 32, they forced their Hokies, their opponent into 16 team turnovers. So that's something that UT Martin will try not to emulate as Darnay finds some space to knock down a three. Nice pass from Diggs. Betancourt with a quick five points. This kid is a budding superstar. It's a little bit, you know, disappointing that we won't be able to stick around for one more year to see his senior season play out because with Blaine Fry and Jacques Diggs graduating, UT Martin's going to need an offensive identity next year. And I think Betancourt will be a big role in the offense, even more so than this season, as then he does some dirty work down in the post. Takes advantage of the height mismatch. A quick seven points for Betancourt. What more can you say about the former Oklahoma Sooner? 8.26 left to go. Still no subs in the game for UT Martin. This shot clock is dwindling. Six seconds left. Diggs, what a pass inside. Great find by Diggs. Both assists from Jacques have been great. And Blaine Fry, I know he is very excited to get back out on the floor and hopefully avoid some foul trouble this time. He's only played 41 out of a possible 70 minutes so far in the tournament which is a decent tally, but obviously Blaine Fry, third in the team in minutes played on the season. He had some foul trouble, didn't play in either overtime game against the VCU Rams last episode, as then Jock Diggs misses a shot trying to get him open, and on the other end, it's Eddie Brewer who checks in. He plays a good chunk of rotation off the bench for the Virginia, or rather Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets as then Evan Schneiderman will be the first guy exiting off the floor for UT Martin with two early fouls. And accompanied by Dusty Harrison, who checks in, will also be Roshan Martin and Brian Gill, the underclassmen backcourt for UT Martin, breaking the press. Let's see how the bench does against the press, and it seems to be working pretty well. They did not miss a beat. Gardner with the mid-range shot. That's another thing he's added to this game in his junior campaign. So UT Martin. Okay, some new viewers started to tune into this game because I know you're going to get that notification on your phone. Seven minutes left to go in the first half, and UT Martin's now up three with eight seconds to go on the shot clock. Gardner, he'll put his shoulder into Hanley Graves. Skip pass. Harrison, that will be good. Dusty Harrison rips it clean, and UT Martin takes their biggest lead of the contest with all eyes on this game. 20 to 14, our first break in the action. UT Martin looking great, not missing a beat from that VCU game. We'll take our first time out here as we head into a commercial break. Welcome back to Sweet 16 action, everybody. Georgia Tech made a few, you know, ripples in the rotation. Kevin Pinson now switches to the point guard spot as Slade Shinning moves to the bench. And Lyndon Shafino, who's a three-point specialist, number 33. As you see him there setting a screen at the low post. Now he's flashing. He makes the extra pass. Eddie Brewer, who with a little kiss off the glass, will knock down a mid-range shot. Brewer is a pretty talented underclassman. He averages 10 and a half minutes a game and he's already up to seven points as Blaine Fry with a head full of steam. Again, UT Martin will break the press. They're playing carefree, they're playing confident, and just like in the VCU game, slowly and surely, you're seeing UT Martin's body language. They know that they can get this done. They know that they can compete with the defending champions. And sometimes it's all it takes as Lyndon Shafino tries to drive baseline on Blaine Fry. He had the foot speed advantage there. Shafino is a 6'3 senior, 6 points a game off the bench, but 36% from 3. And that's actually something that may favor UT Martin in this game as they take their first time out. 
The Skyhawks perimeter defense has been superb through the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. They held Georgetown and VCU to a combined 5 for 22 uh, shooting from beyond the arc put together through the first two rounds. So that's something that favors UTM as they still have a relinquish a three-pointer made to the Yellow Jackets as we check back in from commercial break. Gardner in the post looks cross-court to Diggs as he is still without a made field goal on the game. He has two free throws to his name, but only two shots up to this point on the contest with four minutes to go here in the first half. The Yellow Jackets have definitely been locked in on Jacques Diggs. Kevin Pinson is a really good defender, and Jacques Diggs is eight inches shorter than him. And volume is always a big thing with Diggs. He shot 24 times against VCU in the double overtime win. So we just need to find a way to get him better looks as the Skyhawks set up some motion here. Cleveland to Gardner to Diggs, and he has a sliver of space over Channing, and he puts it through. Diggs retakes the lead. For UT Martin with his first field goal on the game five points total for the senior from San Antonio Texas as we see Diggs here he's directing traffic working off a screen hop step kick out Betancourt it's covered but he still knocks it down Darnay has become the only player on the floor with at least 10 points to his name up to this point in the contest and Diggs with three assists he's already matching his season average in that department as we see Gilbert White no good on the second chance opportunity. Teron Gardner and company down low continue to seal off the interior only 22 points for Tech up to this point but then Slade Channing forces Diggs into a pretty unforced error there. One of the few weak spots for Diggs in his game is he leads this team with nearly three turnovers a night and with a usage rate as high as Diggs that's gonna happen sometimes as we see Xavier Grimes bad defense there by Betancourt no good but then the tipping goes a pretty chaotic play there we're gonna check back into the replay booth Betancourt flying out at Graves not a good play and then it looks like Gardner should have gotten the charge call underneath the rim to no avail and Hanley Graves with the tip in. That's already his third offensive rebound. That's definitely a department that we've gotten outmatched in today as we see Betancourt forcing it down low. Maybe some contact there, but not enough to draw a whistle. Kevin Pinson gets a shot rejected there and he also will set up the offense for the Yellow Jackets down by a bucket. The defending champions on the ropes, but they're looking for the tie game here and they will get it off of the screen and curl play. Pinson with a nice pass to Xavier Grimes, who puts it in over Betancourt. So it's 28 apiece with one last possession for UT Martin to take a lead over the one seed into the intermission. Five seconds left, Betancourt taking a little bit too much time here at the top of the key. One second left off a screen for the lead. That one is off. A little bit short, not the best look there. And in the game where every possession could count for something, and where points are coming at a premium, you're going to need possessions like that to go your way. But 28 apiece, you can't really ask for much more out of a 13 seed against the defending champions. All in all, as we look at the halftime report, UTM has been sticking to their game plan. The Hawks have 28 points as a team, and 14 of those have come inside the paint. Betancourt has two threes and two layups. The Yellow Jackets don't have much of an answer for our budding superstar point man. And Teron Gardner and Blaine Fry have 10 points combined at the half. So we have definitely been dumping it down low like Coach Carter wanted us to. But the Skyhawks perhaps have been sticking to that game plan a little bit too much with the Jacques Diggs taking a back seat through the first 15 minutes. It's not like he's playing bad, he just only has three shot attempts and he's made two of them. It's pretty clear Tech doesn't want to give an inch to our 5'9 senior who just torched VCU with 35 points last episode. Diggs has been creating for others with assists, he has three of them. And he had that one bad turnover, but all in all giveaways haven't played much of a role today. We only have four turnovers as a team, a far cry from what Georgia Tech wants, and we've been surprisingly breaking that press without much issue. With Kevin Pinson and Slade Channing still looking to get it going for the Yellow Jackets, it's been Georgia Tech's bench that's been saving them today. Eddie Brewer has 9 points in 7 minutes, and overall Tech got 15 points out of the first 28 as a team from bench players. So you're seeing firsthand why I said this team is so deep. The only cause for concern if you're UT Martin is the rebounding battle. It's not pretty right now. The Skyhawks are being out-rebounded 11-7 with Tech grabbing 6 offensive boards, resulting in 6 second chance points. That's the X factor in the game right now. Otherwise, UT Martin has been straight up outplaying these defending champs. Well, let's put a fresh 15 minutes on the clock to see what UT Martin's got. Can they be the first 13 seed ever in the Elite Eight? 
That's the question everyone's asking as Coach Carter leads the way back out on the floor for the second half of action. GT, UTM, we're in for a big finish tonight, guys. Let's get into it. Well, if you're just joining me today, you are in the middle of what could become one of the greatest upsets ever in March Madness. The UT Martin Scoggs out of the Ohio Valley Conference have the defending champs on the ropes, tied up at 28 apiece as we get things underway here and moving and grooving here in the second half of action. And to Ron Gardner, who's played a big role through the first 15 minutes, will knock down his third field goal in four attempts to get UT Martin back in the driver's seat with the lead as Eddie Brewer, who was the top scorer with nine points for Georgia Tech off the bench. He will kick it back out to Kevin Pinson, who looks to get it going. No field goals made on the game, but he works his way back to the free throw line where he made his only point of the first half of action. The Yellow Jackets shoot a pretty modest 74% on the season as a team from the free throw line. That's about average for ACC standards. And they shot four for five from the charity stripe in the first half. And that'll improve to five for seven after Kevin Pinson splits these two free throws to cut the lead back down to one. As Pinson then on the next possession looks inside for Slade Channing. Pinson played a lot of point guard in the first half. Georgia Tech shortening up the rotation. We only saw yellow, seven Yellow Jackets make an appearance onto the floor. As we see Jacques Diggs, he's nearly tied up. And it's nearly a turnover, but then alertly, Coach Carter calls a timeout. Not really the situation where you want to be burning timeouts willy-nilly, but nonetheless, we'll go to a break. And we're back into the action after a near Jacques Diggs turnover. UT Martin only had four giveaways in the first half. And also speaking of the free throw line, perhaps UT Martin wants to get back there. Jacques Diggs made two free throws in the first half, and that's the only trip as a team UT Martin has made to the charity stripe as Jacques Diggs almost loses it, but then takes advantage of the scrum game there with the loose ball. Takes a baseline on Slade Channing. And Diggs, speaking of the free throws, he's right back at it to hopefully try to knock down two for two here. He had two free throws in the first half. He had a tray ball made. But all in all, it was a pretty quiet first half. Two for three shooting for Diggs as we look to get him going. Two for two from Diggs as he shoots 77% from the line on his senior campaign. A lot of orange t-shirts in attendance today. The UT Martin faithful is coming out here to Texas to support their Skyhawks and they're up on their feet as Blaine Fry tries to close out on Xavier Graves, but it's just not happening this time. All five of these starters can shoot, including Daniel Graves, who doesn't even start, but he's a 6'7 forward who knocks it down from a step inside the, free, uh, the three point line. So back down to a one point game. Diggs having some more trouble near the timeline. And then here's his second turnover. Pinson with his second steal and his second assist while I'm at it. Slade Channing with six points on the game. As he looks to start getting it going, Diggs once again trapped. He gets it away to Schneiderman, who only played six first half minutes due to two early fouls. But he does find Schneider, or rather Gardner there, to deliver a beautiful first assist. Schneiderman has had a couple of beautiful passes, including a behind the back one last episode to Blaine Fry against VCU. 36-35, the possession and the lead with 10 minutes to go. Blaine Fry has the mismatch. They're going to try to get it in there, but Slade Channing does the best thing you can do if you're a point guard on the wrong side of a mismatch. He pokes it clean from Fry, and then with a hand in his face by Betancourt, still doesn't matter. Slade Channing with a quick seven points here in the first uh, five and some change minutes of the second half of action. So the scoring starting to finally take a turn for the better for both teams as Blaine Fry, who wants to download once again, skip past Betancourt. Nice extra look to Gardner, who is perched at the top of the key. Gardner with his second jumper made on the game. 12 points for the junior out of Denton, Texas. High post, kick it around, and it's going to be delivered to the top of the key. No good, as Georgia Tech is still without a three-pointer made on the game. But Hanley Graves with the hustle, fading away. No good, but then the tip-in is good. Georgia Tech all of a sudden with a burst of energy. They've had the offensive rebound advantage all game long. That's now seven offensive boards, and four of them have come from Hanley Graves. I'm telling you, he's a great athlete, and Blaine Fry and Teron Gardner have had their fair share of struggles covering him on the defensive glass. 
So now we're inside eight minutes to go. UT Martin has still got not going anywhere against these defending champs, but Kevin Pinson, that's a warm-up jumper for him. Darnay just way too far off. A lot of mid-range scoring for the Yellow Jackets as they slowly and surely extend their offense out to the perimeter, but they still don't have a three-pointer made on the game in three attempts. 43 to 40. They're up by three now. The biggest lead that Georgia Tech's had all second half long until Darnay Bencourt in rhythm with a quick three-pointer there after they broke the press again. Betancourt with the hat trick. That's three for four from beyond the arc for him today. But then Daniel Ritter with a beautiful step back move on Schneiderman. Look at that deceptive dribble move there. He knocks it down and it's yet another mid-range shot by these crafty Georgia Tech players. But you gotta give UT Martin credit all of these looks by Georgia Tech have been difficult ones to knock down. They've all been off balance and moving, step back shots, you name it. As then Gardner nearly gives it away. Eight seconds left to go on this possession. Gardner, he's at the high post. He's looking for it. Bounce pass inside to him. And with a powerful hop step move, he will put it through. Another time in this game where it is a tie ball game. And Gardner took him two extra overtimes to reach 16 points against VCU. Doesn't look like he's going to need it today. He's already up to 14 with 631 left to go in the Sweet 16. Inside. That one's picked off. Darnay puts on the Jets. He will try to go coast to coast. And he draws the foul on Kevin Pinson. UT Martin giving the Yellow Jackets a taste of their own medicine. But you also can't forget about Teron Carter there. He's the one who tipped that entry pass to let Betancourt go coast to coast. Offense or defense, Gardner is leaving it all out there on the floor tonight. Remember how we talked about that pregame? Yeah, he is the embodiment of that. As he actually checks out, he's gassed, along with our backcourt as Betancourt puts through two for two of two of the biggest free throws in the game. So our starting five right now on the floor is Martin. We have Brian Gill out there who tries to cover Slade Shanning, who will knock down the three to give the Yellow Jackets another advantage. And it took them all this time to finally make one. But they now improved to one for four from beyond the arc today. So Brian Gill, Roshan Martin, Schneiderman, Blaine Fry moves to the four, and Dominique Cleveland is now at the five to give some starters a quick breather with five and a half left to go. Xavier Grimes wants to take it on the 7 2 Cleveland to no avail. Kick out to the elbow. There's Kevin Pinson. Four points, five and six. And he's actually had five of those six here in the second half. But Blaine Fry, he has another free lane with nobody to stop him. Blaine Fry has also been playing a whale of a game today. Four for four from the field, along with two blocks. 50 to 49. The bench guards and Dominique Cleveland, they're holding it down a little bit. Here we go with Brian Gill, no good. But then Blaine Fry for a second time in a row will put through some more key points with UT Martin hanging by a thread. They score four unanswered to retake the lead. The 13 seed not going anywhere. They have a chance to do something very special tonight as the starters look to check back in with four and a half minutes left to go in the Sweet 16. All right, we're tagging in back here in the heat of it. 51 to 50 with 428 left to go in the Sweet 16. The starters are back in for UT Martin. Kevin Pinson continuing to play some more point guard down the stretch as they go high to low inside to Daniel Ritter. But it is not happening today. Dusty Harrison does check in for some time here with four minutes left to go. He's had a couple of great finishes to the Georgetown and VCU game. He's been very prominent near the end of a ball game so perhaps that's why he's getting the extra run out here over Evan Schneiderman he stops Ritter near the basket but then it's another turnover this time it's Darnay looking cross court inside to Ritter this time he will finish with some authority not missing this opportunity as Slade Shanning hasn't scored much today but I mean hey five assists and he's got seven second half points so 3.35 now left to go. UT Martin comes up empty on their next trip on the offensive side of the floor. And there's a mismatch down low. They find it as Graves will give it to Channing. He tries to take on the whole team. And that one's rejected. Gardner with the swat to keep it at a one-point game. The defense all tournament, especially at the end of a game, has been superb for UT Martin. And it's another huge play as Diggs bounce pass inside to Fry. Looks cross court. Here's Betancourt from 18 feet. No good, but Blaine Fry inside. He will scoop it up, find Diggs in the same spot. And this one is also a little bit too short. 
Oh man, UT Martin needs just one more shot to go and they'll be right back in the driver's seat. But here comes Georgia Tech and it's another block. Gardner with the game of his life. Diggs, he will try to take it all the way and the chase down block is recorded by Hanley Graves. Down low, Daniel Ritter, three point play. It's deja vu, if you will, for UT Martin. Just last game against VCU, they let up a three-point play in the twilight of this game to the opposing small forward and made things a lot harder for themselves to try to mount a comeback. Give Blaine Fry credit, he tried to get back into position, but Ritter is just too good down low, and with one free throw, Ritter can give himself 13 points on the night and extend Georgetown's lead to the biggest they've had here in the second half at four, and he comes through. All right, well, UT Martin, they've been here before. They've had to mount very quick comebacks at the end of VCU and Georgetown, and they came out victorious. Do they have another one in them? Four-point game, 222 left to go. Looking for Diggs, our team captain off the curl screen. Pump fake, gets chinning up in the air. Little floater from the block. He puts it through. Diggs gets two and forces Georgetown into a timeout. Diggs again. I know it hasn't been the most sexy or glamorous day for our team captain, but it doesn't matter. We still call his number whenever we need a basket, and he cuts the lead in half. One possession game with two minutes left to go. Our Skyhawks looking as resilient as ever with a potential all-time upset on the line. We'll take a break. Be right back in a sec. Welcome back everybody, Jacques Diggs just hit a magician-like layup, or floater rather, to cut the lead back down to two. With 2.13 left to go, Pinson brings it up. He's being pressed at the timeline, and they're working fast. He's gonna try to find Ritter for three, and that one is sunk through! Ritter with six unanswered points. That shot might have just sealed it for Georgia Tech. Unless if UT Martin can work fast here, Diggs in traffic, and somehow he gets another one to go. Another Georgia Tech timeout, but man, that Ritter shot right there, that puts a huge damper on the Skog's comeback hopes. We're going to keep it right here as Evan Schneiderman does check in after that blunder on defense by Dusty Harrison. You cannot allow a three-pointer at this stage. And once again, UT Martin will have to defend this time now down by three, 58-55. High post to Ritter, this time covered by Schneiderman as Pinson is waiting for his group to set up an offense 17 to shoot they're really taking their time here Daniel Ritter high post back out to Pinson Ritter keeps moving as Channing has digs right in his face eight seconds left Ritter for another chance at a three and this one is much better defended Betancourt up to Diggs for the tie it's shorts oh man that's like the best look we could have had in that situation but maybe Diggs was just a little bit too quick with it as here comes Pinson for three another triple goes Georgia Tech has waited all game but finally in the later stages of this game they're starting to catch fire from three all three of their team triples have come in the final 324 of this contest coach Carter burns a timeout we're gonna keep it right here but now UT Martin really with their backs up against the wall this is the hardest situation that they've had to try to manage their way through down by six with a minute to go with 10 team turnovers on the game they do decipher this press a lot better on this possession six of those turnovers have come in the second half it's been a big culprit as to why UT Martin is in this situation with 48 left to go they gotta try to hurry it up but the paint is congested they can't get it into Gardner Fry to Diggs and now he's trapped down low this is a very methodical possession in a time where they do not need it to be Betancourt for three this will save the game and he nets it Betancourt with 18 has been a star all game but in bigger news we need to try to foul Georgia Tech to start to play the foul game and even 30 seconds left as we begin to intentionally foul the Yellow Jackets and I think Kevin Pinson is the guy we want to have at the line 66% on this season he's only two for four from the charity stripe today as we officially get into the penalty with 26 ticks left, Pinson flashing to the ball and Bencourt can't foul him. He's got four personals, so Diggs will quickly switch the matchup and now he's covering Pinson and then he will record a reach and foul. So, Kevin Pinson, the sophomore. I know he hasn't been great from the line today, but some guys just do better from the line in these situations and Pinson may be one of them. 
The first one is good. That'll extend it to two possessions. And things continue to spiral out of control for UT Martin. Pinson for the second to make it a five point cushion for Georgia Tech. And it's good. 20 ticks left. Ben Court up to Diggs quickly as Coach Carter burns a timeout right as Diggs steps across the line. And he's going to try to draw up something here for either Diggs, Betancourt, or one of these three-point shooters to try to make it a two-point game and keep the door cracked open for UT Martin. Gardner is the inbounder. He's put up four assists today, and he's trying to make it five here with a huge possession with the season hanging in the balance. An elite eight on the line. Jock Diggs, he's hiding behind Pinson, and then he'll flash strong side corner for three, and it's tipped away. Daniel Ritter out of nowhere for a huge defensive play. And look at this. Hanley Graves putting some salt in the wound. And that would be the three that silences UT Martin once and for all. Two seconds left. Dig step back three. It's not going to matter regardless. The 13 seeded UT Martin Skyhawks from the South region have been eliminated 66 to 58 as the dream comes to an end. Not much you can say about this one. UT Martin fought hard to the very end and had the world on notice as they almost took down the defending champions and became the first 13 seed to the Elite Eight. They were so close. But hey, that's March Madness for you. Everybody gets to play. Everybody gets to dream. And Jacques Diggs, our team captain, he's always so jubilant, so full of life. He plays with a lot of swagger and moxie. Wears his emotions on his sleeve, and he had a hard time fighting the tears as he plays his final game as a UT Martin Skyhawk. But one thing that nobody can take away from us is the amount of respect UT Martin has earned in this historic run. The first ever Ohio Valley Conference team to make the Sweet 16, and Georgia Tech shook a lot of hands today. They knew that we had them on the ropes. But officially, after a historic run, Coach Carter, here at UT Martin, his tenure has come to an end. Man, what a series this has been, guys. Six seasons, Coach Carter has won 125 games here. But, I mean, hey, that doesn't make this loss feel any less <laughs> painful. It doesn't matter if you make the Final Four or lose in the round of 64. Any loss in March Madness is going to sting, and this one is no exception to that rule. 18 for Betancourt. He led all scores and was a star today. It's kind of a shame that we won't be sticking around to see his senior season play out because he has future superstar written all over him, averaging over 15 points a game in this tournament. Jacques Diggs, 13 points on 13 shots. And I mean, his entire tournament was just legendary. He's a name that people are going to talk about 15 years from now with the incredible magician-like performances he's had. And I don't think anybody's going to forget his 35-point performance against VCU anytime soon. Gardner with 14, 6, and 3. Only one missed shot between him and Blaine Fry as Fry flirted with a double-double. Leading Georgia Tech was Daniel Ritter with 16. And... Two huge shots by him and Pinson. That was a difference. That and also Tennessee Martin giving the ball away six times in the second half. Just a little bit too, too much for your liking. But anyway, we're going to check back in the locker room with UT Martin and company as Coach Carter says his final goodbyes to his players after a historic six-season-long series on this channel. And he's got some words of encouragement moving forward. And we're also going to Sit back and take a look at some of the best plays from this tournament. Wow, Coach Carter gives his players a well-deserved goodbye and pat on the back. Oh, well, not quite your storybook ending, huh? Not for us anyway. But you men played like champions you never gave up and champions hold their heads high what you achieve goes way beyond the win-loss column or what's going to be written on the front page of the sports section tomorrow you've achieved something that some people spend their whole lives trying to find what you achieved 
is that ever elusive victory within. And gentlemen, I am so proud of you. I came to coach basketball players and you became students. I came to teach boys and you became men. And for that, I thank you. But something interrupts Coach Carter during the midst of his post-game speech. Something that sounds like a loud crashing noise and people yelling. Well, Coach Carter and his players, they leave the locker room to go investigate. It sounds like it's coming from the court that we just lost a tournament game in not 15 minutes ago. Well, when the players and Coach Carter himself retake the floor, nobody's closer to them than knowing what's going on. The UT Martin faithful are still here to give us one last goodbye. Who are we? We are the Cyclops. Here we Cyclops. And the Skyhawk fans, they also have a champ prepared for Coach Carter himself, thanking him for all the work he's done over these past six seasons of recruiting and coaching and teaching and being a great man. This is what they have to say. today from the UT Martin faithful thanking you the subscribers for your unconventional support through this UT Martin series this is the first series I ever did on my channel started all the way back in July of 2018 and it ends today of November of 2021 thank you so much if you're a little upset about the series ending these fans have your back don't worry